Now that I've hit the record button, we can get started. Introducing the new Weber sword. This may not be 11 secret herbs and spices, but it's tasty. I'll light up a chimney starter full of briquettes and dump them in. Dogs coming out of their dog door while you're talking. I say it every week, that should be illegal. Hi, welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks to master your grill. In this series of how-to videos that I'm calling Shuey's Shorts, I'll be running through some of the best ways to set up and get the most out of your 57 centimetre Weber kettle. In this video, we're going to be tackling the rotisserie and some of the accessories. If you do like this video, don't forget, give it a thumbs up, but also share it with your mates. But the best thing you can do for yourself is hit the subscribe and the bell buttons, and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So, let's get into it. We need to tame that heat. Yeah. So let's run through some basics before we get into the setups. And these basics are for every cook. Number one, control the temp with the bowl vent. Leave that lid vent wide open. Number two, do not rely on a lid thermometer. Go out and get yourself an ambient temp probe that clips to the grill where your food is. The difference between the grill and where that thermometer on a lid is is about 15 centimetres and the heat is going to be drastically different from the two. Number three, the lid vent should always be positioned over your food or on the opposite side of the lit fuel. This is going to draw the heat and if you're using smoking wood, the smoke across your food and out through that lid vent. Four, use water as a stabiliser, because water heats up and cools down a lot slower than air does. So, use it to help stop fluctuations in windy conditions. Also, if you've overshot the temp that you're looking to get to and you're having trouble closing the vents down and bringing that temp back down, add a water pan, add cold water to it and watch that temp drop really quickly. Number five, if you are starting a cook with a water pan, make sure it's hot water. That way it won't be cold water which will be absorbing all the heat and energy from your fuel. You won't be heating up the water, you'll be heating up the air inside the Weber. And the fact is then it's going to create steam straight away and steam actually helps smoke adhere to your food. Six, if you are adding smoking wood, especially chunks, and you're adding more than one, you want to leave a gap of at least 50 mil in between each piece. The reason being is the wood actually ignites and burns a lot quicker than the lump charcoal and the briquettes. And if you push them all together, they're going to force your fuel to ignite and burn a lot quicker, creating a massive heat, heat spike. So 50 mil apart and you'll be fine. Number seven. Don't overthink it. It is, in the end, just heat and meat. Number eight, stay hydrated. Although I'm not cooking today, I do need to stay well hydrated. Since beer is made up of 90% water and the human body is made up of 60% water, it's only natural that you'll have a drink or two while watching this video. Or, for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at a one beer video. But, just to be sure, make it two. The rotisserie setup is perfect for roasting, baking, and also cooking with weapons. Or cooking with a high indirect heat. 
that too. By using the Weber rotisserie ring, it allows your food to sit a little higher away from the lit fuel source than the standard roasting method. Plus, you can buy many attachments to go with your rotisserie, like this basket or these Euros discs for cooking souvlakis. This setup is suited for both briquettes and lump charcoal. So all you have to do is fill up two charcoal baskets with whatever fuel you want to use. Dump them into a chimney starter and light it up. Once that's all ashed over, baskets, put them into the centre, just makes it easier in tipping that lit fuel in. Lit fuel goes in. Using an old pair of tongs, you can now drag those charcoal baskets to either end of the charcoal grate. Now the great thing about this setup as well is when you're cooking your food and near the end of it, if you want to char it up a bit, you can actually move those charcoal baskets into the centre of that charcoal grate, directly under your food and just give it a five minute char up. Again, just using an old pair of tongs, the grill's not in place, so it's not in your way, you can quite easily move them. Just give it a five minute char up. By leaving all the vents wide open, you should easily be able to get temps between 220 and 240 degrees Celsius using this setup. So there you have it. One of many ways you can set up the most versatile barbecue you can buy. The only thing left to do is work out what to cook. As always, thanks for watching. And if you do like free stuff, check out my Instagram for giveaways and extra content. Cheers.